Greetings and welcome everybody. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus. All right. Hope everybody is doing fine. Hope everybody is doing great. All right. So let's get straight into it. So today, again, we want to focus on who is the Son of God? Is the Lord Jesus God? All right, so Ephesians 4 says this. Ephesians 4 verses 13 says this. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And where was this coming from? From verse 11 said, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ the topic of the Son of God who is the Son of God is one of those topic that seem to have resulted in the divide that we have in the churches today, the divide that we have in religions today. The reason why we have so many different versions of the religions are different, so many different denominations. So, I think I have a duty as someone that has the Spirit of God teaching him to Basically start here. I believe the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of who Christ is, the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of God, will help us to draw closer to God. I believe a wise man seeks knowledge after God. As I continue to say, even though I am delving into this topic, this topic is what you would call solid food, solid meat and not necessary milk for babes. It is a mysterious topic that has caused division in the church. Which is why the main, the main gospel and what we are required to believe, God in his wisdom, making it simple for the babes. So it is simple, but still so many is not doing it. What we are required to do is to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is the main gospel. And believe means that we also hear him, listen to him, follow his instructions, follow his commandments, follow his examples, which is faith in Jesus Christ. But faith, which also includes some works, which includes humbling ourselves to his instructions, humbling ourselves to his commandments to be baptized in his name, believing on his name, believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, be willing to confess our sins and repent unto him and to be baptized. And that is the main gospel in a nutshell. But, to reverence him, to respect him, to draw close to him, to use the power of his name. It's good when we get the solid knowledge of who he is so that we can call up on his name with power, with faith, with true conviction from our hearts, with reverence, knowing who he is. And that's why I am here today. I am trying to get the world to be on the same page. I'm trying to get us to 
the one religion of God which doesn't bear a name. To teach God the way God wants us to teach. Not something that we are making money from. Not something that we are supposed to get rich from. But sincerely trying to get everybody to make it into the kingdom of heaven. So that Jesus Christ himself can save us all. That is what should be our main aim. Teaching the word of God as it is. All right, so it is important that we all come to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. So, let me first go to Hebrews 1. So we start in Hebrews 1. Go to read the entire book. And as usual, we start with the King James Version. We use the King James Version. All right. Let me change the color of these so that it is a little clearer. So that you can see on screen. All right. So I think Hebrews 1 does a good job of giving us an idea of who Jesus Christ is. The makeup of Jesus Christ. And leads us to other scriptures but it gives us a good idea as to the makeup of jesus christ from beginning all right so it says god would act he says it says god who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets at in these last days Last days meaning the time since Jesus Christ has come. Since Jesus Christ has come in flesh and blood and died for our sins. And now we are looking by faith to a promise that he has made to make it into the kingdom of heaven. So that forms part of the last days. So in, at in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed here. So this is talking about God appointing his son as heir of all things. Then it goes more to say by whom also he made the worlds. So this is saying that God made the worlds through his son. Then it tells us, it gives us an idea into who the son of God is. So in Hebrews 1, 3, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory, which is God's glory, and the express image of his person. This is telling us that the Son is the express image of God. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, so Jesus purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much more better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Then he said, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he sent, and let all the angels of God worship him, and of the angels he sent, who maketh his angels, spirits, and his ministers, a flame of fire. But unto the Son he sent, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So we see here where begotten was mentioned twice. We see here where it says that the Son obtained a more excellent name and was greater than the, angel, than the angels. Right? For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, 
this day I have begotten thee. So, who is the Son of God? Is he God? Is he another God? Is there two gods? Is there one God? So, the Bible clearly lets us know where God says, there is no other God beside me. So, the Son, who this says, sits at the right hand of the Father, could not be another God sitting beside God. So, these things then become mysteries, things that we have to search for answers so that we can draw closer to God, so that we can draw closer to Jesus without being confused as to who the Son of God is. So, the Son of God was begotten twice. The Son of God was created twice in two different forms. That's a mystery. The Son of God was begotten twice. The Son of God was created twice in two different forms. All right? So, when was the first time was the Son of God created? And in what form was he when he was first created? So, we go over to Revelation 3, verses 14. All right? So this is Jesus now talking to John. Jesus after he had done his works on earth and now he was talking to John in a vision. And he is talking to John about the works of the seven churches. So he's giving John the, f the visions of the future. So in each stages, he expresses to John who he is. So at Revelation 3, 4, 14, he says, And unto the angel of the church of the Lyosidians write. So he's saying to the, to the angel to write these things that I am saying. These things say the Amen. So Jesus is saying that he is the Amen. The faithful and true witness. He's saying that he is the faithful and true witness. Then he says something mind-blowing, critical, important, that reveals a lot that we cannot look past. He says, He is the beginning of the creation of God. So we know that he is not making reference to his creation as man, because we know that the beginning of the creation of God, the first man that was created on earth was Adam. That's a well-known story. We have, we have been learning that from school. So the first man that was created was Adam. So therefore, this is the Son of God, Jesus, the angel that is talking to John, saying that he is the beginning of the creation of God. So does that mean that it is another God? Or is this God being mysterious in what he's saying? So if he is the beginning of the creation of God, what is he saying? So, the first angel that was created by God was the Son of God. We read in Hebrew where it says, He is the express image of God. Right? So, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. So, He is the image of God. So, if he is the image of God, it means that God created something in the very beginning for himself. Because he is the express image of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, the first thing that God created for himself was an angel. That angel he called Son, it says, unto which of the angels did he say at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So, 
The first time God created Jesus, he says, This day I have begotten thee, thou art my son. However, it is a spiritual body that God created for himself because God is an invisible God. So, now God, in John 3, Jesus explains the spirit as like unto wind. We hear the sound of the wind, but we do not see the wind. We do not know which direction the wind is coming from or where it went. But we know we hear the sound of it when it is loud. So is the father from the beginning. From the beginning, the father was without form. From the beginning, the father was without a body. From the beginning, the father was invisible. So he is the invisible God. So therefore, what is the composition of God? What is the sound that we hear? The sound that we hear is the words of God. So from the beginning, God was word. From the beginning, God was word. You hear his voice talking, but not seeing anything. That God, with his spoken word, spoke into being and created an angel. That angel, he calls that angel son. Then God, who is word, went into that angel and spoke through that angel. So God did not create another spirit called word. God is word. From the very beginning, God is word. God, who is word, operates from within an angel, a great angel, the first angel that was, to be cre that was created, and he calls that body son. And from the very beginning, God chose to operate and speak through that son in the heavens. And that's the angel of God. So that's the first begotten of God. So I say to you that God in the beginning was and is word. So we go to John 1.1 1, 1, who reveals this. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Thank you, Jesus. So, in the beginning was the word that is letting you know that from the very beginning, this is the composition of God. God is word. And the word was with God. When we hear this, it is similar to the verse where it says, And Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost. And this is something that the Holy Spirit just revealed to me out of the blue one morning when he was trying to teach me this. I was not thinking about anything. And he just, he just harmonized do these two scriptures for me out of the blue. So I could understand this. And God was, and the word was with God, means that that body that he created, the angel was called word. God, who is word, went into that body and that angel takes on the name word, the word of God. So the son of God takes on the name word. He is the word of God. He's the spoken word of God. God talks through him. So, but, so it is God that went into that body and was operating from that body. So that's the first thing that was created. So God created a body for himself, the begotten son of God. And God whose word operated through that son. So we, jump, we can quickly jump to the verse, but I don't want to be all over the place. Where it says that, and Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost. Which means that the child was in Mary. Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost. So I'll go to it as soon as I'm finished here. Mary was with child of the Holy Ghost. Means that the child was in Mary. And the word was with God means that God was in the word. God was in the angel. 
And then it says who the word is. And the word was God. Hope you are following. The word was God. So, it, so therefore, I've almost said it in so many words. The Son of God is not different from God. The only, the only difference is that God created a body and went into that body. Made a body for himself. So, it is not two gods. It is the same God. Which is why it is said in Ephesians 4.4. 4. Ephesians 4, I think 5. Ephesians 4, 6. Ephesians 4, 4. That is, this is why it says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. So it is not two spirits. It's one spirit. There is one body. That's the body that God created for himself, the angel of God. And that's the first begotten of the Father. Now this body at that time would have been equal and worthy enough as the first creation of God. Pure, a pure creation of God was worthy enough for the Father, the Word, to go into that body and that body takes on the name Word. Which is why it says, in 1st John 5, I think 7, right, so 1st John 5, 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Right? So, this is another verse that results in the confusion and the mystery of God that needs to be explained. Where persons think that this is saying that these, this, is three, this is three spirits, this is three separate persons, or this is three gods. All this still means is that the Father, who is creator of all, the beginning, the Word. The Word that is making reference to here is the Son of God. And the Holy Ghost is a combination of the Word and the Son of God. That's why in John 14, Jesus says, We and our is going to come. And that the Holy Ghost cannot come before I go, before I am glorified. So the Son needed now to move from is second begotten state of flesh and blood and needed to return to his initial state where he, where he becomes worthy enough again. That's why Hebrews keep on saying, and again, and again. So he needs to return to his glorified state and he could send the Holy Ghost before that time because he needed to return to his glorified state where now he is now combined again with the word, the Father, the Father, the fullness of the Father's enter into him. And that is the Holy Ghost that now comes into us. So this now takes me to the second begotten state of the Son of Man, which is where a lot of confusion has happened, which is why we have so many divides now. So this is where the mystery comes in that needs so much explaining. So let me first start off with myself. Who am I? My name is Terence Harvey. I was born to a woman as a child, as flesh and blood. I grew as a man to the age that I am now, experienced so many things on earth so far, so many temptations have I experienced so far, 
so many failures have I experienced so far? So many achievements have I experienced so far? I've experienced what it is to be a human being, a man. How did I come about? The father blew breath into me. And when he blew breath into me, from a fetus, I became a living soul. My body came to life. And I then received what God gave me is the spirit of a man, which based on God's inspiration, I got understanding and was able to talk, was able to think. But what am I? I'm a man with the spirit of a man inside of me. And let me go over to 1 Corinthians 2, I think. First Corinthians 2 verse is 11. And what it says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? So, the only things that I know is, I only know the things of a man, except the spirit of a man which is in me. Save means except. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So, when you start understanding the spirit, spiritual things of God, I started understanding the spirit of God, the spiritual things of God. When God came into me and filled me with the Holy Ghost, similarly to how he filled the apostles with the Holy Ghost. Right? So, I am Terence Harvey, a man born of a woman, flesh and blood, have inside of him the spirit of a man. But now I also took on a new thing that was given to me by the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. So the glorified Jesus, the combination of the Word, the body of God, has come into me. So now I am a man that has the Holy Spirit of God inside of him. Now, that that I just explained to you, is it two spirits? Is it, am I talking to you as a man with my understanding yet still have the Holy Spirit that has taught me things, that has taught me things? That's who I am. I'm a man who has received the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit teaches me. No, am I greater than the angels? No, I am a little lower than the angels. Jesus Christ took on this same form that I am now in. That's why it is said in Hebrews 2, he was made a little lower than the angel, which means that he moved from one state that he was before to go into another state. That other state that he went into, he took on flesh and blood. So that form that God created from the beginning transformed for the sake of mankind to save mankind. He made himself a little bit lower than the angels. So he took on flesh and blood. So therefore, Jesus was begotten for the second time through the Virgin Mary. All right? With child of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Knowledge, wisdom. When as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph. Before they came together. And before they had sex. She was found with child 
of the Holy Ghost. And this is what I was explaining to you before. Just as it says in John 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Holy Spirit revealed it to me out of the blue. And Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Meaning that Mary had the child inside of her. Just the same, the Son has the Word inside of him. Okay? And that body takes on the name of the Word, which is what God is, and he's called Word. He's also called the first begotten Son of God. Took on flesh and blood, born to a virgin Mary, and grew from child to a man. Now, this man went through regular processes as a man. He was, in, Matthew, in Mark 6, he was described as a carpenter. So, he had to live as a man, learn skills as a man, function as a man. So when he came to earth, just as I am first a man, when he came to earth, he was now first a man, just like me. Now have, having the understanding or the inspiration of God as a man, having the spirit of a man inside of him. And for 30 something years, that's how he lived. Like just a regular man. Was not even yet promoted to apostle. Was not yet even yet promoted to prophet. Just a regular man. And this is where the confusion comes in the earth. So when he says, My father is greater than I in John 14. The flesh and blood is not equal to the father. Because he left that first begotten state, that glorified state, and took on a form that was lower than the angel. So no, he was not as great as the father. The father was greater than he was. At this time, he was not even worthy for the fullness of the father to come into him. Right? He was not worthy for the fullness of the father to come inside of him. So, clearing the air, when Jesus Christ came in flesh and blood form, it was the second begotten state, and he spoke as a man. And the spirit of a dove came up on him in Matthew 3, or Matthew 2. Right. Let's go to read. All right. So I have to be taking my time. I hope that you are you're eager for knowledge of God and you're holding out to have the full understanding of the Son of God, because it is important knowledge. All right. So it is Matthew Matthew three. All right. So, then cometh Jesus, so Matthew 3, 13, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So, just to throw this in there, baptism is a requirement, right? Believing in Jesus Christ, baptism is a requirement. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, see, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting up on him so this is similarly to what I received 
I'm a regular man living for 30 something years. And at some point in my life, the Holy Spirit of God decided that I was holy enough for him to come into me, into my tabernacle or into his tabernacle. Right? The tabernacle was prepared and was made holy enough for him to come into me. Similarly, the body of Christ at this point was just the tabernacle of the Father. Right? When he first created it, it was also the tabernacle of the Father. It was made pure and holy and worthy for the Father, the Word, to enter into him. So now, again, the tabernacle which was flesh and blood at this point, the Holy Spirit, not in the same form that they, ascend, that they ascended Jesus, the Holy Spirit was not in that form. Right? So, it was the Spirit of God, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of understanding coming unto him. The Spirit was going to give him boldness now. Let him speak with authority. So, he was 100% man with the Spirit of God coming inside of him, making him into what is called the chief apostle. So, while Jesus was on earth, he was just an apostle. All right? Wherefore, so Hebrews 3 1, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our, of our profession, Christ Jesus. All right? When he came to earth and the Spirit of God came upon him, he was then an apostle, the chief apostle of our profession. All right? So he was just a regular man. So he had the spirit of a man inside of him. And that spirit of a man was connected to man. He worked he has a, as a carpenter. He feels pain as a man. Hence the reason he cried to the Father to say, let this cup pass me by. Remember, he was made a little lower than the angels. All right, this is David, prophet David, prophesying the son of man. And he says, for thou hast made him a little lower than the, than the angels. That's Psalms 8, 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the, than the angels and hast crowned him, crowned him with the glory and honor. And we see it in Hebrews 2, 7 again. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowdest him with glory and honor, and did it set him over the works of thine hands. And we see Hebrews 2, 9 again. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So this is the reason. This is the reason why he was made a little lower than the angels. So he moved from a glorified state that he was in the beginning, the first creation of God. That body transformed from a spiritual body to now a flesh and blood body, which was no longer as great as his fellow angels, which was no longer as great as the original state that he was in, and took on a state that made him a little lower than the angels, that made him feel pain, that made him, when he felt the pain, when he was about to be crucified, he said, Lord, let this cup pass me by. His sweat was as blood. So it's not two gods. It's one God. One God, the Word, operating through the Son, which is why in John 14 he says this, to Philip, when Philip says, show me the Father. Verse 
John 14 was, whoa, mind-blowing in terms of the revelations that are here. A lot of things that are said here that could cause so many confusion. He said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. And whether I go, he know, and the way he know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus, the body, is the veil, the tabernacle. He is, he, Jesus' body is the representation of as the second veil in the tabernacle that was created by Moses in the Old Testament. The second veil, what was behind the second veil was the holies of holies where God himself would come. Jesus' body is a representation of that. He is dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Right? So, Jesus' body represents the holies of holies that was made holy enough for the Father to enter into him. In order to get to the Father, who is the Word, who is now in the Son, we have to go through that veil to get to the Father. We get to the Father through prayer unto the Son, believing unto the Son of God, that body that was made holy through sacrifice for our sins. So it, it had to go through a process, a process of being tempted, a process of, of, of dying on a cross, cross, and the cross itself represents an altar that blood was shed on. All right, so many revelations in my speech because these are teachings from the Holy Spirit. Okay, so... The body of Christ is a veil that the high priest would have to go through in order to go into the holies of holies one time per year. Similarly, the Holy the God has now entered into the holies of holies, into the body of Christ one last time when that body was prepared for him in the kingdom of heaven. So that body was prepared and returned to its original glorified state, the Father went back into that body. Now, what state is Jesus is not yet revealed. But Paul gave us a glimpse when he saw him. He saw this bright light that he could not look up on. That represents, I let you know, that the Son has been glorified. The Son of Man has been glorified. The light of him, which will be the light in the kingdom of heaven. God has entered into that body one last time. Just as though once per year the, the, the high priest would go into that body. Just the same. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, you're good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, the Lord has entered into his tabernacle one last time. The glorified Jesus now comes to us as the Holy Spirit. That's why, don't be confused. When he was on earth, he says, My Father, who is greater than I, Father is greater Let's hope, hopefully this takes me straight to it. Okay? He says, John 14, 28, he says, He have heard now I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If he loved me, he would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Now, Jesus at this time when he was talking was still in the state that was made a little bit lower than the angels. He was... It was in the state that where he was 
taken away from his original first begotten state and now in a lower state than the angels. So at this point, he was not worthy to say that he is equal to the Father. So, for my Father is greater than I. But, oh my God, we got the victory when he died on the cross, when he was sacrificed. He, was, he went through the process and was made holy and worthy enough to return to the Father, maybe even greater than before, for now the Father to enter into that tabernacle, his holies of holies, one last time. No, he could say that I am worthy and equal. That's why he was glorified, means that he was brought back to a state that he was not. That's why he says, I was the one that was dead. Because the flesh and blood died. But he is also the one that was glorified for the Father to come into him. So, this is as clear as day. One God, one spirit, one body. It is, it is the same God operating through the Son of Man. And this is why, while he was on earth, he said this to Philip. Philip said unto to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him. He says, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. That lets you know that the Father, even while he was on earth, was still operating through him, was still operating through a body that looked the same. But it was not the glorified body. It was now a flesh and blood body. And how how says, how says thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. So, the Son had the Father, operating through him the holy spirit the word the spirit came upon him as a dove just as though the spirit comes upon us now to to teach us the things that i am teaching to you now right jesus received the spirit upon him so it was the spirit of a man that was connected to the flesh and blood at this point right he could feel pain i had the spirit of god inside of him so don't be confused. What do we now have? What do we now have in heaven? A glorified body with the word returning to that body or the word, the fullness of the word operating through that body in a glorified state, a light state. Right? Bright. The brightness is the brightness of the image of the Father, of the invisible God. All right? God is invisible, my people. Right? Is the invisible God. Right? So God, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Right? The apostles understood who he was. Right? So when he says in Revelation 3, 14, I am the creation of the Father, the first creation. He is the image of the invisible God. God created a body for himself. So you'll see that everything that I say just simply aligns. I'm not afraid to show you any verse in the Bible. I can explain almost every verse in the Bible. Give me five minutes or two minutes to read the chapter and I will... Read it and understand it as it was supposed to be understood. Not changing anything. I can explain anything in the Bible. Right? I, I can explain the book of Enoch. I can explain all 66 of the Bible. I can balance the entire Old Testament with the New Testament for you to understand it. I have the Spirit of God inside of me. I have the anointing of God upon me. I can explain anything because he's teaching me all things. 
And I think let us start here. Understand who God is. All right? The 70 elders saw God. They said that they saw God. All right? 70 elders saw God. All right? Exodus 24:10. And they saw the God of Israel. This was men, the 70 elders, seen God. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. So they can't describe what they saw, except, you know, God, when God came to the children of Israel, he came in fire, he came in clouds. As it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. This is describing what they actually saw. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Although it's saying that they saw God, what they really saw, uh, what all they'd heard was just the voice of God. There was nobody at this, there was nobody at this time. So God did not come at this time in his angel form. God came at this time in his spiritual form, working from clouds. Okay, so God chose at this time to not come in his angel form. But there are many times when God came in his angel form. God came and stood before Balaam in his angel form. And God opened Balaam's eyes so Balaam could see. And what Balaam saw at that time was the angel of God. So from the very beginning, we have been seeing the angel of God coming. That's what Adam and Eve heard in the very beginning. In the very beginning, Adam and Eve heard God walking in the garden. That was God walking in his first begotten son that he created, his angel form at that time. Right? When Balaam saw him, they saw the angel of God at that time. It was the angel of God that Balaam saw. All right? God was operating from within that angel. Also, in Genesis 18, in which Sodom and Gomorrah was being destroyed, there are three angels that came to visit Abraham. One of them was called the Lord. Isaiah 42, the Lord says that my name is the Lord forever. There was one angel that was called the angel. There was one angel that was called the Lord. Not all three angels. When, all, when the other two angels went down to see what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, that angel stayed with Abraham. That angel was called the Lord. That was Abraham seeing Jesus. All right? That was Abraham seeing Jesus at that time. Right? So, God has, the angel of God has, ex, 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 the angel of God has existed from the very beginning. And he came to earth at, at that time in the Old Testament and showed himself unto men at that time. Gideon also saw the angel of the Lord. So, Jesus, the Son of God, has existed from the very beginning, not as a separate spirit, but as the image of God, with God operating through him. God created an angel for himself. It's not two gods. It's one God. It's the same God. All right? We want us all to come to the knowledge of who the Son of God is. One spirit. That spirit is... It's called word from the very, very beginning. Because that's all you heard. Just the voice of God. And you can't see anything. Can't see nobody. Nothing like that. Just word. And that word built a body, created a body for himself. And went into it. That body took on flesh and blood form and came to earth and was made a little lower than the angels. And at that time now, knew what it was to work, feel pain. And at that point, he says, my father is greater than I. Because at that point, he was not yet worthy to consider himself equal to the father again. He had to go through a process, a sacrificial process, to make his tabernacle holy enough for God to enter into his holies of holies one last time. Just as the high priest go into that, into the tabernacle in the Old Testament once per year, God went into that body for one last time. And now the fullness of God operates from that body in the kingdom of heaven. So the fullness of God. Let me see if I, this verse will come up quickly. Fullness 
of God has the fullness of the Father. Right? So after he was glorified, it pleased the Father that him should all fullness dwell. So in that tabernacle, that holies of holies tabernacle, dwells the fullness, the fullness of the Father. So when you hear that the Son is sitting at the right hand of the Father, imagine the Son sitting beside a God who is invisible. A God that is omnipresent. A God that is everywhere. A God that is also representing himself through an image. That a son that has the fullness of the father in him. Do not picture two spirits. Picture a body with a spirit inside of him. Picture a body that has the fullness of the father inside of him. Picture a God that is invisible. Working through a body that is his son. God carrying out all the operations. Don't let anybody tell you that it is three distinct persons. Or three different spirits. These are people that do not have the spirit of God inside of them. Teaching them the things of God. You have to be willing to humble yourself. So that God can fill you with the Holy Spirit. And you have to do what I have done. Which for years I have been seeking for the truth. I have been seeking for knowledge. And I have been reading the Bible. Many, many books of the Bible over and over and over and over. God, through different points, brings to me different forms of anointing, different powers he brings up on me until he has finally brought me an anointing where he now teaches me everything. He filled me with the Holy Spirit from I was 12 years old because he was preparing me throughout my life. But he sealed me from that time, right? And now, throughout my life, while I studied his word, while I seeked him, he continued to, uh, when I went to different phases and got diff new knowledge, he bared witness of certain things. And I got a different experience at one point that makes me speak the way that I speak right now. You can achieve the same thing of, I'm trying to help you now, giving you a head start, giving you things that he has taught me and teaching you these things so that you too can read the word, read the New Testament, Learn about God so that he can love you, come into you, make your body holy so that he can come in you and fill you with the Holy Spirit just as he has done to me. Don't let anybody tell you that once you believe in Jesus Christ, you're already filled with the Holy Spirit. No, that is not true. You need to experience what the apostles experienced where God chooses at some point to come into you and change your language while you are praying to him. While you are meditating upon his word. While you are considering the things that you have con you are considering that you have read. He chooses that at some point you worthy enough and holy enough for him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And change your language. Give you a supernatural experience. And changes your believing mind to believing even more. Alright? Don't be confused people. Let us all come to the knowledge of the Son of God, as Eve, Ephesians 4, 4 says. All right? So that we can express him and glorify him the same way. All right? The world is in chaos. The world is confused. All right? Preachers and pastors out there just telling you to bring a seed to them so that they can get rich. All right? Yes, you can still go there and go to their churches and present your body as a holy sacrifice to God. And God... We still fill it with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter which church you go. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're at home in your room locked up. God can find you anywhere. It doesn't matter if you're at a seven-day Adventist church. It doesn't matter if you're at a Jehovah Witness church. It doesn't matter if you're at First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you are. Once you seek ye first the kingdom of God, once you seek God for yourself, he will move upon you anywhere you are. Even if you go into a church that where a woman is the bishop of the church. Once you are seeking God for yourself, God deals with us individually. God will move upon you anywhere you are. It doesn't matter which church you are going to. You need to make up a decision for yourself to try to find God for yourself. And he will move up on, on, on you for himself. 
God will move up on you for himself. Doesn't matter where you are. You have to be hungry to find him. As I was hungry to find him. I now reserve myself in holiness for him. Because he has moved upon me. Because he apparently loved how I was seeking him. You can find him the same way. If you are watching this channel for the first time or not, I recommend that you hit that subscribe button below and hit that bell so that you can be notified when we release life changing videos. My main place is YouTube, but I am now doing live to Facebook, doing live to Instagram, doing live to YouTube. All right? So this is, this is the start of greater things. Hopefully, the entire world can see this truth. Understand God. We don't need to run away from any scriptures. I don't need to even run away from the book of Enoch. All right? The lies of the nation. All right? The lies of Satan. The, the part lie, part truth. Where they give you part of the truth. The book of Enoch lets you see who God is. Right? From the, it shows you how God knows the end from the beginning. Where he was able to give, tell Enoch the entire story of mankind from start to beginning. All right, God knows the end from the beginning, all right? All the best. Love you so very much. Bye-bye.